greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It is me, by the way. Uh, I only come in disguise it occasionally. Oh, no, microphone. Yes, it is me, forgetting the microphone. For those of you at home, I greet you also in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We have bands of marriage for the third time of asking. First of all, I read the bands of marriage between Carl Gary Smart, single of this parish, and Tanya Lorraine Daglish, a previous marriage dissolved, also of this parish. For the third time of asking, if any of you know any reason why they may not be married, you must declare it. And then a special prize for these two, because they've attended all three Sundays. Well done, Brett and Faye. I published the bands of marriage between Brett Green, single, of the parish of St. Peter's Watford, and Faye Louise Gamel, also single, also of the parish of St. Peter's Watford. This is for the third time of asking. If anyone knows any reason in law why they may not be married, you must declare it. And we continue to pray for Carl and Tanya and for Brett and Faye as the date of their marriages draw even closer. And now let's stand again and we sing our opening hymn, 550. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, 
All design is known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name, Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all righteousness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We take a moment of silence and then we will pray our collect for this, the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever Amen. Now, please be seated, apart from Nick, who will come and read our first lesson. This is uh, the letter from Paul to the Corinthians. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out in the darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed always carrying in the body of the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For a while we live, we are always being given up to the death of Jesus' sake, 
so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We stand and sing our gradual hymn, 376, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did? when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food. He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? to save life or to kill, but they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and he immediately conspired with the Herodians against Jesus how to destroy him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.
from our first reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul wrote to the people of the church in Corinth, we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus, Jesus Christ as Lord. We do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus. Do we? We'll think about that this morning. So, when we are doing something at which we are very good, when we finish, do we say, thank you God for giving me such talents, talents such as I do not deserve? Or do we think, wow, aren't I great? When a service finishes here in All Saints, do I go out by saying, thank you God for giving me inspiration? Or do I simply think, wow, you're pretty good, aren't you? We do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Only we can answer the question, do we? And answer it in our hearts. And I commend every one of us, including me, to do this. Not just every so often, but regularly. And in this respect, Paul gives really clear guidance in this week's epistle about how we should strive to be. He describes us as being like clay jars, clay jars holding treasure. And this brought to my mind the example of the TV programme, The Masked Singer, where the key point of the programme is to take away the focus totally away from the personality of the singer and focus rather on the quality of the singing. The words, the tonality, the interpretation. And Paul is making two points with the analogy of the clay jar. First of all, clay jars by themselves are nothing special. You know, they're, they're to a penny if they're simple ones. They only acquire value if they're very beautifully finished and painted and, and then acquire a rarity value. A normal clay jar has value only in what it's holding, what it's containing. If it's full of feathers, it's worth virtually nothing. If it's full of precious spices, then much more valuable. That's one part. It's not the clay jar that's important, it's what is inside and what comes out from it which is important. The other thing is that if you drop a clay jar, it's broken. Only what's inside it remains. So we are like clay jars. What we look like, what we sound like, is of secondary importance to what it is that we are saying, what we're doing, how we are. And we're not eternal. We are all finite. We all have our time. We all have our place. Like clay jars, we can break. So that's the reality. And then next, Paul moves on to encourage the people, those clay jars, to encourage them in the best way to proclaim, not themselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. He tells them that if they accept the, the guidance, the love and the care of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, then even if they're afflicted, they will not be crushed. If they are confused, they won't be driven to despair. If they're persecuted, they won't be forsaken by God. If they're struck down, they won't be destroyed. Paul is saying that whatever life can throw at us, if we accept that we are merely, merely clay jars, then we will be protected by God. So there's the first message from the epistle. Let's move now to the Holy Gospel. We're only two chapters in to the Gospel according to St. Mark. And at the end of this morning's reading, 
we're told that the Pharisees immediately went out and conspired with the Herodians to get rid of Jesus. Two chapters. Mark had barely set the scene and already the established church were wanting to get rid of this problem. Yeah. Was he a terrorist? It's nothing like that. His crime, his, the problem, was he was a danger to their religion and a danger to their national identity. Yeah, his actions and his teachings threatened the very foundations of the Jewish faith because the Jewish faith was totally bound around the law of God as laid down in the Torah, the Ten Commandments being central to it. And the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath, and it's the Sabbath of the Lord your God. All laid down in Exodus. The problem was that by the time Jesus was conducting his earthly ministry, those laws had been taken to the extreme. And actually, among good Orthodox Jews, they still observed meticulously. A fellow priest told a story about when he was on um, a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. He was staying in a hotel in Jerusalem on an upper floor, and it was the, the Jewish Sabbath. And he was waiting for a lift with a Jewish couple. And they waited, and they waited, and they waited, and the lift didn't come. And eventually the Jewish couple stepped back and went round the corner. And the priest realised the lift hadn't been called. So he pressed the button, and the lift came very, very quickly. As soon as the ping went, the Jewish couple came back, and they were smiling nodding thanks they couldn't even press the bell of the lift because it was the sabbath it was according to this very same law that jesus was condemned first he allowed his disciples to pluck ears of corn because they were hungry the pharisees found fault there but jesus came back at them with some verses and reminded them of the example of David. It's verses from the psalm that he, uh, one of the psalms that he, he quoted. So then he went into the uh, temple and he cured. And healing is most definitely regarded in Jewish law. Medical treatment, medical work is regarded as something which at that time was punishable by death. Hence, the Pharisees immediately leaving and conspiring with the Herodians to get rid of Jesus and have him killed. Okay, those are the, those are the facts, that's the background, there's a 21st century example, but let's stop and think about this whole business about laws, codes and customs. Yes, the basis was laid down by God through the Ten Commandments. But the coda, now they have been developed by people. Yes, the Ten Commandments say we should remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We should make it holy to God. We shouldn't work. It doesn't say that if you cure somebody in the temple on the Sabbath, you should be put to death. This is something which has been added by people. Now, we sometimes say that laws are meant to be kept and those which are no longer observed should be abolished. That's, that's one way of approaching it. Another approach is that laws are regarded as something which is like an ideal standard of behavior that no one expects you to be able to reach. Um, I have definite memories of, of that approach to the law. Very soon after the downfall of the Soviet Union, I was in Georgia, 
and we, I was being driven to somewhere way out of the capital city. Every time we got to a village, the speed limit was 50 kilometers. There was a young guy dressed as a policeman waving his baton trying to stop the car. I discovered what this means. I never knew before. You know, coming from the north of England, if you wanted to be very rude, he gave two. I didn't know about this business of the middle finger. The driver gave the middle finger and then went up to about 100 and drove through the village. Stop? No way. After about three villages, I said, are we not going to be in serious trouble here? Yeah, I had visions of the stinger being thrown out in front of us. He said, don't be silly. Those guys' fathers have paid $100 to get them that uniform. Now they're trying to get the money back. That's an extreme attitude to the law. Our attitudes to law vary according to society, according to time. We live in what has been, until very recently, a tolerant society. And that's, that's allowed us, as people, to have quite a lot of freedom, particularly in our personal and private lives. Sadly, it seems to me at least, that that freedom is being tested to the limit, most certainly in the United States. And let us pray that the fashion is not replicated in this country. Jesus said in response to the Pharisees, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And that principle should apply to every law. Laws that are made should be for the common good, not for the good of a particular class or a particular religion or a particular nation. MAGA, America first, Britain first, a horrible basis for making laws. But let's leave that. Let's concentrate on what we can do personally. Where are we with respect to proclaiming not ourselves, but proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord. Where are we with respect to honouring laws? Where are we with respect to honouring the Sabbath day and keeping it holy? It's the first Sunday of Trinity. We're here in Hollow Weald. It's the year of our Lord, 2024. And what are we doing on the Sabbath? We're taking time to worship God. Now, it would be easy to say amen, hallelujah, and leave it there. But no, we can't quite stop there. Yes, we're taking time to worship God. But doing that can be in like the contents of a clay jar. It can be anything from absolutely priceless in value to God, or it can be absolutely worthless. And what is it that makes the difference? The difference is, to go back to the question I posed right at the beginning, when we leave, will we go out proclaiming ourselves or will we go out proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord? That is what makes the difference. Ultimately, God is the Lord of all because he's created everything, even us imperfect beings not only created, he also sustains us. God knows what is good and right for us. And even more than that, let us thank God that he gave us his son. And through the example of Jesus, we now have all that we need to know about how we should live our lives. So do we do we not proclaim ourselves? Do we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord? As we go out, let's remember we're clay jars. And clay jars that we are, may we proclaim Jesus and not ourselves. Amen. I invite you to, to stand and
I invite you to join me to proclaim our faith in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Shamian is expecting to come and lead the press. I didn't check with you, sorry. Please. Lord God, as we come into your presence, help us push out all the day-to-day -day things in our thoughts and concentrate our hearts and minds on you. O oh Lord, we thank you for this last week, for the prayers you have answered, for the strength you have given us, for the grace you have bestowed upon us. May we rejoice and give you the glory for great things you have done. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we pray for our world. We pray for peace and cooperation and reconciliation between nations. We pray for the peacemakers, for those trying to bring aid to the displaced, the hungry and the suffering. We pray for compassion, for the granting of dignity and for understanding. In our own country, we pray for the lead up to the general election, for decency, for honesty, for respect, that personal slurs or abuse <clears throat> will not form part of any campaign. We pray that the next government, in whatever form it may take, will place the quality of people's lives before power and politics and seek to bring people of all backgrounds, abilities and faiths together rather than fan the flames of division. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our church, for Father John, for the church wardens, for the PCC, for the congregation, the choir, the bell ringers. We pray for those who are new to the church, who are visiting, for those who will be hearing their bands of marriage read. We ask your blessing on them and bid them welcome into our church family. And we pray for the church building project, that the plans for the vestry and link may progress smoothly and that the money will be found to cover all our costs. Lord, may you use each one of us in your service. May we be your hands and feet in caring for your creation and for the people around us. Help us to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling physically, for the sick, for the injured, those recovering from operations, for their nurses, carers and families. We pray too for those who are troubled and anxious, worried about bills they can't pay or relationships or the future. And we ask your blessing, Lord, on anyone we know personally who needs our prayers. And Lord, we remember those who have died recently and today we remember Diane Holsey and pray for her family and friends. We give thanks for those who've gone before us, for all that they meant to us and the ways in which they enriched our lives. And we pray for all who are in mourning. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, even in the most hopeless of situations and in the most challenging of times, help us to remember to come to you in prayer. In the words of St. Paul to the Corinthian church, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Help us to know that you will uphold us if we only have faith and trust in you. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord appeared to his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I wave you a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. And for Joshua, peace be with you. And for those at home, from the people of all saints, peace be with you. And now as we prepare the table for the Eucharist, we sing our offertory hymn, 575, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us 
in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed and supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take eat. It's my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks. He said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us the Lord. With the whole church throughout the world, <coughs> we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, and we lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven, singing... Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord.
body and blood of Christ our Lord. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit 
to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Uh, now let's stand and sing our final hymn, 683, To God be the glory, great things he hath done. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you who are here and with all who you love, wherever they may be, today and always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. rocky start and after that we managed not too badly not so much excitement and drama this morning thank you for being here to worship god together this morning if you're following from home uh thank you for joining us and quiet special thanks joshua as well we went we showed the the beauty of worshiping god through music from the modern interpretation of the lord's my shepherd with townsend and rattled off to God with the glory at the end. Beautifully sung, and thank you, Joshua, for all you're doing for us as our director of music. Now, I have some uh, notices to share, and I'll do my best not to forget. Most important of all, tomorrow night is ladies' night. So, duck in the pond tomorrow night. If you want to uh, eat, as well as having a, a drink and fellowship, then get there in good time. And if you just want to join for fellowship and maybe a drink of something, then any time during the evening. So that's tomorrow evening uh, in the duck in the pond. 
And then a reminder that on Friday we'll have an opportunity to say a final farewell and thank you to God for the life and witness of Diane Hossey, who was a regular member of our congregation. Her funeral will be here in church at 12.30. And then looking ahead, we have coming up, and this is in no order of, uh, as they say on Britain's Got Talent, it's no order of importance, it's also no order of chronology either. Um, Friday the 14th of June, in the evening, late evening, it's the midnight walk um, for St. Luke's Hospice, and we have agreed to act as a first staging point for water and for loos. Um, Maggie, thank you God, Maggie's back, and has agreed to coordinate our um, uh, looking after the walkers. If you're able to be around for an hour and a half or so on the Friday evening from say 10 o'clock until half 11, maximum midnight, then your help would be greatly appreciated. Please see Maggie and she will uh, sort out a rotor. That is okay, you did say yes, no, yeah, I think I'll. Great, and then Monday the 10th of June, um, these are all in the, um, the news list, so I'm just briefly going over them. There's the friends visit to uh, church gardens, and uh, it's, I think it's not too late. Still some places, Nick, are there? It's, it's finished. Well, then, have a great time. So that, that's all I'll say about it then. But it's not too late to get tickets for uh, Carol Wells, our D-Day concert, on the 15th of June. I really plugged it last week. I hope you took it to heart, took uh, posters home, and are doing your best to sell tickets. Sue has hobbled here. The, we're off, and uh, is here. If you want any more information or tickets to reserve tickets, Sue is there and would be delighted to help you. And I mentioned last week also about the Tonic Choir, and I've even got it right in the newsletter this week where they're going to be singing in the coming Saturdays. I think that's it. I've put it off as long as I can. I have to tell you with the heaviest of hearts that uh, the church has found out how old I am, and the inevitable is going to happen. Um, my last service here will be on Sunday the 8th of September. I managed to convince Bishop Lusa to be allowed to stay that long because Ella is putting together what we hope will be a major fundraising uh, evening in church on Saturday the 7th of September. It will be an evening of fashion, of music, and of fellowship through flowers. So Bishop Lucer has agreed that we can stay until then, and on the day after, we'll have our the church, I hope, will be full of flowers. We'll have our harvest festival, and that will be my final service. In the parish, um, I should have gone last November, so le let's Let's be positive about it. Um, I will be given a half-time post uh, in the centre of London, uh, being allowed to continue, but priests are not allowed to continue as full-time priests, um, in principle beyond the 70th birthday, and um, I'm quite a bit beyond that. So I want, Ella and I, want to say to you all, thank you for being so supportive to us and so encouraging. We've got a lot still to do. I've been given another three and a half months. We're going to make most of every second. I want to drive forward the LINK project. I want to see us with permission for that and contracts in hand for the building works. I want to see us with a DSC application for the internal works and I will not let them go until they approve it. Uh, we've had some great news. We're going to get some quite significant funding through the bequest of Clem, Clem Lewis, our former organist and Jill's husband. And that means we're going to be able to do the works which we have been talking about and planning for so long. So, that's it. Uh, Please let's keep going as if nothing has happened. Not in denial. I think we've been in, I've been in denial these last eight months. 
but not in denial. Let's keep going. Let's keep the spirit of all saints going. You know, all saints is all saints. All saints has had many priests, and you'll have many more after me. It's not about the people. It's about God. Remember what we said. Do we proclaim God, or do we proclaim ourselves? At all saints, let us always proclaim God. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.